I heard an old story. Thank you for tuning in to the television ministry of Clay's Mill Baptist Church. Join us as we share our passion for soul winning, spiritual growth, and revival in our state and nation. And now, Pastor Jeff Fugit. Well, good evening and welcome to the program tonight. I say that every week, but it's a joy to be with you. It really is. And I thank you for watching the program. I trust it will be a blessing to you tonight. My wife and boys will be here to sing in just a moment. I believe two songs that you're going to really enjoy this evening. I believe that these songs will be a blessing to you. We're excited and thankful for what God is doing. And though I repeat myself often, uh, my life is the church. It's not just where I work. Uh, it is my life. And I have lived here and I've loved being here all of these years. Uh, in the month of May, I will celebrate my 30th anniversary as a pastor here at Clay's Mill Baptist Church, and God sure has been good to us, and I rejoice in the blessings of this week. I would like to ask you a favor this evening. I would like to ask you to share the program to your page. There have been some changes on Facebook policy, and I can't explain all of those, but I can say that the more people who share the program, the more people naturally who will see it. But with the changed uh, uh, rules and the setup that they have, the more people that share it, it will not just add to your friends that can see it, but many others can as well uh, based on the shares. And so uh, even if you're watching it on my page or our, our church page, if you'll share it to your page, I sure would appreciate it and believe the message tonight about our faithful God, our God who is faithful, I believe will be a blessing uh, to the many folks that will be able to watch it. I'd like to invite you to services here tomorrow. If you do not have a local church to attend, we'd love to have you come and be with us. Sunday school begins in the morning at 9.30 in church at 10.30 tomorrow morning, tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. I want to tell you about some places I'll be preaching around the country and love to invite you to come and be a part of those services if you live in those regions or have family members that, that do. March 8 and 9, that's Monday and Tuesday, I'll be in Ravenna, Ohio. I'll be at the Bethel Baptist Church. Brother Dave Ballard is the pastor there. And uh, you would enjoy the singing of the choir and the young people that always sing there. And I believe that you'll enjoy the preaching. Uh, we'd love to have you come and be a part of the services. March 8 and 9, Bethel Baptist Church, Ravenna, Ohio. March 22nd and 23rd, I will be with Pastor John Nettesheim in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Elizabeth City, North Carolina, and this church uh, is a brand new church, and uh, they're excited about what God's doing. Uh, they bought a church building there, and uh, they just got started a few months ago and uh, have been up into the 40s in attendance. This is a new small church, and I love to preach in those kind of churches. I just love to be a blessing and encouragement to them. If you live in that city, uh, come and join us up there. And then I'll be in Urbandale, Iowa. Urbandale, Iowa, uh, March 29 and 30. I didn't write the name of that church down. Uh, pastor McCoy is the pastor, and rather than try to guess, uh, I'll get that to you next week on the program, March 29 and 30. Uh, pastor McCoy, uh, Urbandale, Iowa. If you live in that region, I'll be with Brother Chris Dallas, Evangelist Chris Dallas from our church in that Passing the Mantle Conference. We'd love to have you come and be a part of the services there. We sure are excited about what the Lord is doing in our building fund and building and, and growing in our Sunday school. We'd love to have you come. If you don't have a church home and uh, visit us and be with us here, I believe you'll enjoy the old-fashioned services. We're still singing the old hymns of the faith and preaching from the King James Bible. We're, st we're still seeing uh, sinners converted following the Lord and believers' baptism and growing in faith. What a joy it would be to have you come and be a part of our church services. Here's my family to sing. You'll enjoy this good song and then the preaching tonight from the book of 2 Thessalonians in chapter 3. In sin I wonder 
talents I squandered. I did not heed my brother, him whom I need. Then Jesus found me, from sins unbound me. Now I'm telling the world about his love. To sing, sing about, about my king. wonderful king. Praises ring, to ring, gave his life, gave his own life, every street, that we from sin that might we be from made sin free. might be made free. I'm happy to say, I am glad to say, I'm on the right way, I am on the way. Yonder in glory, we'll tell the story of Christ our Lord, my brother trusting his word, with saints and sages, through endless ages, we will tell the whole world about his love, his wondrous love, to sing, sing about my King, wonderful King, make his praises, make his praises ready to ring. to tell the whole world that's why I'm telling the world about his love his wondrous love I'm preaching tonight on the subject the God who is faithful when I say the God who is faithful I'm talking about the God with the capital G because he's the only God who is the eternal and living God. He is our creator, uh, he is our sustainer, he's our savior, and he is our coming king. I'm going to give you many, many verses tonight from the word of God that remind us about the faithfulness of God. I'm not talking about a ma an imaginary God, not talking about a make-believe or a made-up God, I'm talking about the God of this book right here. Let me read to you 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, and let's begin in verse number 1 and read through verse number 3. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith, but the Lord is faithful. Isn't that good? Isn't that wonderful just to hear the words? But the Lord is faithful. Now let me read it again. Verse number two. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. Now you may think you live in a world where wickedness abounds, and it does. We could talk about that. Tonight, we're not going to because we see it everywhere. We hear about it. We hear from it 24-7. But in the midst of all of that, we have a God who is faithful. The Bible says, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Now, this letter from the pen of the Apostle Paul is written to a church that's experienced Inc. that is experiencing great spiritual growth. Chapter 1, verse number 3. They're a giving church. They are a loving church. They're active and they're growing and they're reaching the lost around them. Chapter 1, verse number 5. However, this church is also in the midst of trouble. For you see, the Thessalonians were suffering persecution from without 
And because of that persecution from without, they were having some pressure from within. The pagans around them wanted to see the church destroyed. And some of the members, because of fear and anxiety of what was going on the outside of the church, and who were unruly, they had embraced some false doctrines concerning the person and work of Christ, and they were trying to fundamentally alter the course of the church. Paul writes to this church to encourage them to persevere in the face of trials. He writes to this church uh, to address their concerns about the second coming of Christ as false teachers had convinced them of many things. And it's a shame how that's going on even today. Uh, We have this rise of Calvinism that comes along so often and it comes to churches and and basically it's a a false notion that uh, God has already decided who's going to be saved and who's going to go to hell and there's not anything we can do about it. If that be true, why would the Lord continue to tarry his coming? Why would he have us to preach the gospel? Why would he have us to do the work that we're doing? Dear friend, those are false doctrines that kill the church. Our job is to preach the gospel to every creature and have faith in God until he returns. And Paul is writing to the church at Thessalonica and he said, though men around you are evil, though men around you have left faithfulness to God and faithfulness to the doctrine of the word of God, he said, I want you to understand we serve a God that is faithful. And we need to be true to the God who is faithful. We need not allow the unfaithful to take us away from our trust in a God who is faithful. He says in verse number three, such a wonderful phrase here, but the Lord is faithful. I have it underlined right there in my Bible. I have those words underlined, but the Lord is faithful. No matter what you say, our response could be, but the Lord is faithful. You turn on the news in the morning and it's bad news and you could close it by saying but the Lord is faithful you can look at the problems that you may have in relationships the problems you may have in family the problems you may have among friendships and you could say but the Lord is faithful you can look at your health and it may be uh, you may uh, be uh, having some difficulties as far as your health is concerned ah but you can follow it up and say but the Lord is is faithful. I want to give you three things tonight that will help us to trust in God, the faithful God, even the mint in the midst of unfaithful men. I will tell you, it's disappointing to trust in men that let you down. It's disappointing. I know it is. But if we're not careful, we'll focus our time and our attention on the unfaithfulness of men and we'll lose sight of a faithful God. First of all, I want to say tonight, the Lord is faithful in his person. He is faithful in who he is. Do you know people tonight that what are what we call moody? Sometimes they're happy. Sometimes they're angry. Sometimes they're sad. Sometimes they're positive. Sometimes they're negative. And you never know what mood. Uh, we, we're like uh, the fellow in the old restaurant, uh, in the old western that puts in a white flag to see if it gets shot first uh, before we step inside the door. And we're around uh, folks like that. But can I tell you, God's person never changes. God is faithful. God is faithful and throughout the Bible, the Bible tells us that he is. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 4.31, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse number 15, for the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you. Now the word jealous here would not be an unrighteous jealousy or an unholy jealousy that we would feel in this old fallen flesh. But the Bible is telling us when God is a jealous God, that means He wants to be the one that we love and he wants to be the only one that we know uh, provides for us and meets our need. He doesn't want anybody coming between us and him. He's the one that loved us. He's the one that gave us life. He's the one that sustains us. He's the one that meets our need. Oh, what a wonderful thing. I'm glad he's a jealous God. I don't want anything to come between me 
and the Savior. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 10, 17, For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not person nor taketh reward. Deuteronomy 33, 27, The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are everlasting arms. Joshua chapter 1 and verse number 9, The Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. I'm preaching tonight on this subject. Our God is faithful. He's faithful, first of all, in his person. He never changes. The Bible tells us in 2 Chronicles chapter 30 and verse number 9, for the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you if you return unto him. Job chapter 36 and verse number 5, behold God is mighty and despiseth <clears throat> Not any, he is mighty in strength and wisdom. God judgeth the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. The psalmist tells us in Psalm 7 and verse number 11. Psalm 46 and verse number 1, the Bible says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Aren't you glad he's faithful as a person? You know, I've had so many wonderful friends in life. And I've had friends that were very stable persons, uh, uh, people in their personality. I mean, every time you saw them, they were the same. Uh, they may have had a quiet personality, but it was always the same. And it brought a security and a sense of peace every time you could fellowship with them. I'm glad God is a faithful person. He doesn't change. Recently, I talked to a family uh, of a dear friend, and he uh, is sick, and his mind is not uh, what it once was, and he's not always able to talk on the telephone. He can't recognize and remember. Oh, but I remember when he was so strong. I remember when you could ask him any question he seemed to have, not just an opinion, but a Bible answer. Boy, I miss some of my friends that were faithful, that were stable, that were steady, that were secure. I'm glad even though friends have died and gone on to glory, I'm glad my heavenly father is a faithful God. He was there this morning when I called on him. He's there this evening before I pillow my head and go to sleep. He's a faithful God. The Bible says in Psalm 54, 4, Behold, God is mine helper. Psalm 68, 20, He that is our God is the God of salvation. And unto God the Lord belong the issues from death. The Bible says, But God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. The Bible says, for the Lord our God is holy. He's always holy. He's always righteous. I'm saying tonight, I'm glad that in a world, and, and, and the text passage tells us that around us are unreasonable and wicked men, for all have not faith, and we don't know what deception is going to come, and what surprise is going to come from men. All oh, the, oh, the disappointment that, that comes from federal government where one group goes this way a while and another group goes this way a while and always splitting and arguing and there are times that you can cheer on this crowd and then the next day uh, they turn around and they do something wrong and there's so much confusion and disappointment. Glory to God tonight. My God is faithful. When I met him in the morning, dear friend, he was the same as he has been every morning. God is faithful in his person. The Bible tells us in 1 John 1, 5, Then this is the message that we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. 1 John 4, 8, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. I love this one. Nahum chapter 1, verse number 7, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. God is faithful. He is faithful in his person. Let me give you something else. God is faithful in his promises. Now, I want to tell you, this book right here is filled with promises. There's a little song that says, Every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. This is a book of promises. Many folks live in fear and frustration because they're not living in expectation of the fulfillment of promises because they don't read the word of God. 
I could, I could go into a long list of promises. There are things that I claim every day. For example, I ask God every day for wisdom. I want God's wisdom. He said I could have it. Um, uh, James chapter 1, verse number 8. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. I ask him for wisdom. I ask God for his love. You know, our nature has a selfish love. Our nature has a love that just wants its needs met. But the love of God wants to meet the need of another. And while there's joy in receiving, it's more blessed to give than to receive. I pray for the love of God. I pray for the wisdom of God. Pray for the love of God. I pray for the power of God. I have a limitation in my ability, in my strength, in my, in my uh, power, in my own ability. But God's power is not limited, and it's available to me. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He said in Isaiah, I'll pour water on him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I want and I pray for the Spirit of God. Here's what I believe. When I pray for the God's promises to be fulfilled in my life, I can believe them because God is faithful in his promises. Here's what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 20. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. Romans chapter 4, verse number 21. The Bible says, And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. God always stands by his word. He always stands by his word. The Bible says in Psalm 138 and verse number 2, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. God's word. Read it and claim it for yourself. One of the great promises in the Bible, he told Abraham, I'll make you the father of a great nation. Do you know Abraham did not see that personally? But he lived his whole life with that promise that he'd be the father of a great nation. Of course, he had a son, Isaac, who had a son, Jacob. Oh, listen to me. And God fulfilled his promise of making him the father of a great nation. It was a promise. And the Bible said that Abraham staggered not at the promises of God. Tonight, I live in a world of men that are deceitful. Some on purpose, some by simple error or being human. But I'm glad right here the Bible says, for all men have not faith, but the Lord is faithful. He's faithful in his person. He's faithful in his promise. And oh, I, I love that. Let me give you the last one, and you're going to enjoy this. He's also faithful in his performance. Everything God has said, God has done, is doing, or will do. Do you know God never makes a prediction in this Bible? Do you know prophecies are not predictions? Predictions are something that they think are going to happen. A prediction is something like a weather forecast. God never gave a forecast. He never gave a prediction. God gave prophecy and what God said will happen, it either has happened, is happening, or is going to happen. He is faithful in his performance. The Bible says this, Psalm 36, verse number 5, Thy faithfulness reacheth Unto the cloud. Do you know what that means? His faithfulness is unlimited. His faithfulness is unlimited. Psalm 89 verse 33. Nevertheless my loving kindness. Will I not utterly take from him. Nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. Not only is his performance unlimited. His performance is unfailing. Listen to this verse that I have here. Uh, Isaiah 49 verse number 7. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One. To him whom man despiseth. To him whom the nation abhorreth. To a servant of rulers. Kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because of the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. Lamentations 3, 22 and 3. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. You know, one of the things that encourages me for tomorrow 
is to look at God's performances in the past. How many times has God let me down in the past? Not one single time. God's word has always been fulfilled in my life. So tomorrow, I have great hope. I have great joy. I have great assurance because I have a God who's faithful in his person. He's faithful in his promises. And he is faithful in his performances. Think of this. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is faithful in the forgiveness of sins. The Bible tells us uh, uh, that the family will fail in John chapter 9, but God is faithful. The Bible tells us sometimes that funds will fail, but God is faithful. The Bible tells us sometimes that feelings will fail, but God is faithful. He tells us sometimes that our faith will fail, but God is faithful. Just as sure as the sun rose this morning and just as sure and I'm pointing to the west as the sun set this evening, God is in control and God is faithful. You know what that does for me? It gives me a calm assurance. All of grace is my story all the way from earth to glory since by grace he lifted me from sin and woe living grace he hath extended as on him my heart depended and he'll give new grace when it's my time to Grace not yet discovered, grace not yet uncovered, grace from his bountiful store. Grace to cross the river, grace to face forever, there'll be new grace I'm not needed. There's been grace for every trial. There's been grace for every mile. There's been grace sufficient from His vast supply. Grace to make my heart more tender. Grace to love and pray for sinners. But there'll be new grace when it's my time. grace not yet uncovered grace from his bountiful store grace to cross the river grace to face forever there'll be new grace I've not needed before I'm not needed.